A distraught father brings in his daughter, one of the survivors. At a moment like this, I couldn't help thinking of my own daughters. Seeing children in war, it's, it's something you never get used to. You can see the impact of a 500-pound bomb. It just landed in this courtyard in this compound. It snapped all the trees off, killed the birds in the trees, and all the livestock in the yard here. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is the people that get killed sitting having breakfast. That gut-wrenching scene shot in northern Afghanistan about two years ago after Taliban forces dropped two 500-pound bombs. The bombs missed their target, landed on a home, killing 11 members of a family. It's part of a Travel Channel documentary uh, shot by our next guest, best-selling travel author Robert Young Pelton. Uh, he not only spent time with the Northern Alliance and their recently assassinated leader, Ahmad Shah Massoud, but also got an inside look at the Taliban rulers of Afghanistan. They took him on a tour of the parts of that ravaged country that they control. Uh, the documentary airs Sunday, October 21st, just in a couple of days at 9 p.m. Mr. Pelton, author of The World's Most Dangerous Places, joins us now from Los Angeles. Uh, so what do you think it's going to be like for uh, our GIs eye to eye with the uh, Taliban fighters then, uh, Robert? Uh, you know, it's hard to say, but if you look at what's happening in Chechnya and if you look what happened in Afghanistan with the Russians, um, you're pretty much going to see a scenario where we win battles, but we might lose the war. Tell us about the units. How does the Taliban fight? I mean, uh, there's a lot of news recently out of London that we knocked off one of Osama bin Laden's uh, uh, top lieutenants. Uh, does a top, is it like Massoud on the Northern Alliance? Uh, do they have leaders that are critical to their, uh, their cohesiveness, their continuity? Not really. The, the Talibs are like Apaches. If you can imagine small groups of independent uh, men led by commanders who might be 21 years old, they might be 60 years old, and they pretty much uh, execute the war as they see fit. Now, every once in a while, they get together and come up with a strategy, but basically they can fight autonomously for a very long time. All right, tell us about the front lines now, as you saw them. I don't imagine that they've moved very much, although there is some movement uh, in recent days uh, with Mazar al-Sharif in the north, and maybe even, the, you know, clicks, little kilometer steps toward Kabul. What are the front lines like? Well, it's funny because you're looking at a place that 25 different conquerors have rolled through. So every, every place that is defendable is known intimately by every Afghan. And they know where to fall back to. They know where to hide. They know where to suck people into to kill them. It's, it's, a, it's a perfect killing ground. And uh, in terms of the individual courage and competence as, uh, as infantry? Uh, they're pretty tough. These are people that have grown up in war. You have to remember they've been fighting for 23 years. A lot of the people that are on the front lines have never actually known peace. Can we beat them? Uh, it depends what game we're playing. If we think we're going to beat them militarily, sure, because they don't have uh, the kind of technology, but can we actually subdue them? And I think that's the question. You can't bomb an idea. You can't defeat terrorism just by occupying territory. But what about uh, these defections uh, that we're hearing about? Uh, you know, f up to, uh, I heard up to 5,000 or 5,200, I heard today, uh, the Northern Alliance showing off a couple of dozen uh, who spoke to the camera and said, uh, yeah, we're leaving because the Taliban's in a, uh, you know, uh, a mess right now. Defections go both ways. It's been fairly common in Afghanistan to either buy or convince uh, commanders to lend their arms to your side or the enemy's side, but they can also be your friends and your worst enemy at the same time. I, I just think, uh, with all due respect, uh, Robert, uh, we're a lot better than the Soviets were in the 80s. Uh, we've got uh, some great equipment. Uh, we've got our best troops there, and I don't think we want to keep the ground. I think yeah. we want to hurt them, sharp, short punches, and get the bad guys, and then uh, hopefully let the Taliban crumble on their own, uh, you know, the disarray. Well, unfortunately, if you try to define what a Talib fighter is, I mean, they don't have uniforms. Uh, once they get amongst the population, how are you going to tell the difference between a non-combatant and, and a terrorist? There, there's no way to separate them. Robert Young Pelton, uh, author of The World's Most Dangerous Places and the Travel Channel, Colonel Ken Allard. It ain't going to be easy, but we're going to do it. And you heard it here first. Or maybe second. <laughs> <laughs>